Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues Unite. All right, so uh, this is going to touch largely on something I have covered uh, in different ways in the past. You know, we're, we're always talking about America's uh, national security and all this stuff. This is always shoved down our throats. And the current events that are going on are an extreme illustration of exactly what I have said before. We spend all this money on, you know, weaponry and uh, our military and, and all, all this stuff. And meanwhile, what is happening right this minute uh, with gas prices and inflation going on. How secure are you? I, I, I was talking yesterday about the split, uh, the global split between East and West and North and South. Uh, and this is an expansion on that. Let's look forward from where we are right now. Um, you know, many Americans can't afford to fill up their gas tank right now. I, I can afford to, but considering how far I have to drive for my job, it's taking a big bite. Uh, I, I cannot imagine how people making $10 an hour or less are even surviving. I can absolutely see many Americans just quitting their jobs now because it's going to cost them more to get to and from work than, uh, uh, than they make at their job uh, in some cases. Or, just, uh, or it'll cost enough that it's really not worth it. Anyway, uh, you know, we're seeing inflation uh, contrary to what we're being told. Yeah, you and I both know that inflation is sitting somewhere around 20% uh, across the board. And meanwhile, we've got trade disputes and militaristic disputes with China and Russia and Iran and whoever else. And so the United States is saying we want to uh, increase, we want to increase our independence from China and from Russia, et cetera, et cetera, cutting Russia off from the SWIFT system. Okay, so let's just imagine, you know, oh, oh, by the way, before I go into this part, so while Americans are struggling right now, uh, our government turns around and her hands $13 billion to Ukraine, where we have no concerns. We don't have any concerns except for the U.S.-backed bioweapons labs in Ukraine, maybe, and arms sales. Uh, those are our only concerns in Ukraine. The $13 billion that was handed to Ukraine was taken away from COVID relief funds. Think about that. All right, so how much would that $13 billion help Americans you know, to buy food or gas or pay rent, etc. Uh, there is no concern about that. No, not by our government. Not when they can wage another war. All right. So, moving forward from all, all of this, sanctions, tariffs, uh, you know, uh, trade embargoes, etc., which have the result of not only increasing prices, but they also decrease trade 
So it decreases our exports. So we have less to sell. We're selling less now. Think about that. So it's, this is going to cost Americans jobs. Okay. As much as they'll talk about, oh, well, building weapons creates jobs. Yeah, well, it also, it, 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 you know, all these sanctions and everything also eliminate jobs in agriculture and machinery, etc. So let's imagine for a moment that America says we want independence from China and we want to isolate Russia. Well, let's imagine that Russia and China decide, okay, we're going to help you with that. And they cut off all trade with us. Right now, there are global shortages of about everything. So if China's selling more, starts selling more to other countries, we account for 4% of the global population. China has increased trade with just about everyone. Russia has increased trade with China and Pakistan and on and on and on. Both of them have increased trade with Africa and South America. They, they are more important and trustworthy trading partners than the U.S. is because these countries don't try to get, even if they decide that they're not going to sell and trade with a certain country, they don't try to get the entire world to sign on to these trade sanctions. They're like, okay, we have a disagreement with you. We are not doing business with you. That's the way it should work. That's, you know, but that's not the way it works. Anyway, so let's imagine that uh, China, for example, says, we're not going to trade with you. You know what that means? That means that Taiwan, which is part of China, is not going to trade with you. Hong Kong, which is part of China, is not going to trade with you. Let's take a look at how, how just how important uh, U.S. trade is to Taiwan, as an example. And let me get this up. This is from uh, the U.S. government. Uh, this is the uh, International Trade Administration of uh, the Department of Commerce. All right. China is Taiwan's largest trading partner. With all of this stuff about Taiwan and uh, being against China, Taiwan, uh, China is Taiwan's largest trading partner, accounting for 26.3% of total trade and 22.2% of Taiwan's imports. All right, so uh, other in terms of total trade, other major uh, Taiwan trading partners include Japan, U the European Union, and Hong Kong, which is another part of China. So you add that 7.9% to that 26.3%, and you've got, what, 34.2%. 34 the United States is Taiwan's second largest trading partner, accounting for 13.2% of total trade and 11.5% of Taiwan imports. 13.2% compared to 34%. Uh, hmm. Well, yeah, I, I think they could lose that 13%. Uh, as far as uh, exports to Taiwan, what do, they, what do we export to them? Machinery, which can be built in China. Electrical machinery, which can machinery, which can be built in China, chemicals, which can be made in China, mineral fuels, which can come from Russia or 
the Middle East. Optical and medical instruments, again, which can be made in China. All right. Taiwan was the eighth largest agricultural export market. And how much is our export market doing right now on agriculture with a massive uh, drought going on? Yeah, 3.3 uh, billion. Uh, okay. So, I mean, yeah, beef and beef products. Well, that can also come from Australia if Australia, you know, gets their head out of their ass. Wheat. Well, okay. Again, I think that can come from Russia. Uh, fresh fruit and corn. All right, so, so they have options uh, for where they can get, replace any trade with the United States very easily. So if China says you're not trading with the U.S. anymore, Taiwan really hasn't lost anything. Uh, oh, yeah, we're not going to sell them weapons anymore to try and ramp up tensions with China. So all of a sudden, Taiwan and China make peace. Uh, okay. Uh, Russia, uh, like I said, has increased their trade with other countries. Uh, right now there is a global shortage of many things, like I said. Wheat, grain. You know, Russia is the largest exporter of grain globally. We, I, I don't even know. We, we set second or third on that. Actually, I think Ukraine sits second on that. Yeah, and you got Russia and then Ukraine, and the U U.S. comes comes in third or, or further down. <clears throat> so, what happens if Russia and China decide? We're just not going to trade with the United States anymore. What happens to us, especially technologically? I already explained how yeah, minerals that come from Russia are the only uh, mineral source for minerals that are included in uh, every microprocessor on the planet. They decide they're not going to sell it to us. Um, you know, China says, hey, China and Taiwan uh, decide we're not going to trade with the United States anymore. You think we have a microchip shortage now? Imagine the, those microchips being cut off entirely. Uh, so... China has been increasing trade and investing in infrastructure in many countries, South Africa, uh, the entire Middle East, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So these countries start building up more technological capabilities, and we're frozen. <coughs> uh, excuse me, worst allergy season I've had in decades. Uh, so where are we on this? Uh, how secure do you feel right this moment? Sending uh, billions of dollars, uh, you know, to Ukraine, still waging wars across the Middle East and uh, military occupations in 50 of 54 African nations etc., uh, etc. Et the U.S. empire is on its last legs. This is the end of the U.S. empire. We could be far more secure if we would make peace agreements with different countries, if we engaged in peace agreements with other countries, if we stepped back and allowed peace agreements to move forward without our involvement to keep 
those peace agreements from happening. We would be far more secure and far more prosperous, prosperous if that happened. So, this is American security today. You can die because you can't afford medical care. You can wind up unemployed because you can't afford to get to and from work. You can go into debt. From, you know, there's all these memes going on about financing the gas going into your tank, which is not far off from the truth. You think about it, many Americans are probably using uh, credit cards right now at horrendous interest rates to fill up their gas tanks because they have no other choice or to pay their rent because they have no other choice. But sooner or later, they hit the limit of their credit and can't afford to make the payments. How secure are we? And you can wave your flag and, and so forth, but this is where we're at. So share this video. Talk about these subjects. I care about fellow human beings I, across the planet. I care about my fellow Americans, but our government very clearly does not. It's time for a change. It is time for us to start stepping up. We need an anti-war movement. We need, we need a lot of movements going on. Oh, and by the way, yeah, Oil companies, weapons companies, and corpora corporations are making record profits. But look at what the stock market's doing and as a general rule. It's dropping, dropping, dropping. So wait for that to come. All right, share this video. Talk about these subjects. If you can, please donate a dollar a month to help expand the channel and the website. And I will catch you in the next one.